Hi, Chris Wallace from Second Swing. We're in Carlsbad, California today at Cobra headquarters. That was really good. So I've got Tom Olsofsky with me. Tom, how's it going? It's going great, Chris. Great to see you again. It's always fun to talk golf clubs. Absolutely. Exciting time of year. We're talking about F9 today. Specifically right now, we're going to talk about the F9 Speedback Driver. It's a great looking club. I know the adoption from your tour players was instantaneous. Mm -hmm. Not only did they put it in the bag, they won with it. Bryson sure. and Lexi. Right. We're going to talk about the driver. Specifically, let's start talking about the shaping, what you've done from an aerodynamic standpoint and a CG location standpoint to really drive performance here. Yeah, one of the things that's kind of interesting when you think about drivers, Chris, is we've always talked in the industry about aerodynamics. Um, but interesting enough, we never really combined aerodynamics with a good low back CG. Because typically what happens with aerodynamics, and I'll just show you on the driver here, if you take the driver, what you want is a flatter crown relative to the ground, because the more you draft the crown down, the more drag you get over the top. So as you raise the crown, you raise the CG. So that's why those two things have never really been done before. All the drivers that have claimed an aerodynamic story have always had a raised crown, but then a high CG. And what we talk about is really this speed back weighting here, which if you look at the shape, everything around the head comes up, but the speed back area. And that's where we put a weight that gives us low back weighting. So this combination hasn't really been done before. And what you see with this automatically is more club speed. And we know that the ball speed is governed a lot by the USGA. We have very tight limits there. Um, and everybody's pretty much up to those numbers of limits off the face. But if you could increase club speed, you're going to get more ball speed naturally because you're getting more club speed. Yeah. So that's the one thing that's really key is, uh, you know, we're scratching for every couple yards we can get on a driver. Um, every little millimeter of movement of CG, every improvement of arrow, all combined together to give us a speed back technology performance that right away is proving to be w winnable. Um, these players just don't switch for the fun of it. <laughs> right. You know, they switch because they're playing for millions of dollars. And when you do that, you want to have the best equipment possible. And, you know, it's a very easy switch for them because we're getting a more speed right away. And of course, some of the speed and you've really maximized the efficiency started with F8 with the CNC milled club face. I know you've been thrilled with that technology and it's back again here in F9. Right, when you look at CNC milling the face, we know that pretty much every driver we're gonna make in our premium category will be CNC milled. It's a little bit more expensive, but what it does is give you a very precise face. And, and again, given the limitations we have with the USGA rules, um, the CT tolerance uh, is, is there to kind of, for us to make a better club, we could enjoy a little bump up. So when you're talking about CT, you know, the number that the USGA uses is really 239. People like to think about it as 257 is the number, but actually 239 is the number. And so they want you kind of around there. They give you a tolerance because of the measurement variation that you have, uh, both in production of a number of heads with varying thicknesses, as well as just the test itself. So we're trying to get that number up into the 240s, into, you know, right at 250 if we can in some cases, because that's typically what you get for tour product. But that said, the way we do that is because we have a tighter tolerance on machining this face. So uh, when you have hand polishing, there's a lot of variability. The other thing that really helps you is when you're doing complex curvatures, which is what we have on drivers uh, these days, um, it's harder to make those with a guy hand polishing them. We've used something called dual roll for a number of years, and dual roll is there by adding loft on the bottom of the club. We're helping golfers get not only more forgiveness, but more distance on those low center hits and low miss hits. Typically when you have a low hit on, on the driver, you have lower launch and higher spin. That's just a function of the, the off-center hit. Mm -hmm. um, but what you notice is when you get the players at average to slow swing speeds, they still need more launch and spin on those shots to get more distance. Right. So it's really a maximizing the ball aerodynamics with the launch condition. So what we've done is added loft in the bottom. And so we add a little bit flatter radius, which adds loft, and we keep a traditional radius on the top. We also do that in the bulge, where we have three different bulges, and we could do that very precisely. With hand polishing, it was very difficult to do, very time consuming, and not very accurate. So not only can we get a tighter thickness tolerance across the face, so we get a little bit more speed on center and much more speed off center, but we also get these very precise radii to dial in your accuracy. Gotcha. And I know also um, you made some modifications to the carbon crown to save mm -hmm. even more weight right. to get exactly where you want in terms of the CG position. Yeah, and when we look at this whole design, you know, obviously of raising the crown, that typically is going to raise your CG. 
So what we had to do was fight back for some extra weight by modifying our carbon crown. It actually wraps around, you can see the little wrap there. Mm -hmm. It wraps around the edges and takes away more titanium, not only from the top, but also from the sides. So you're able to save about four grams. Four grams is pretty big in a driver, you know, usually we're scratching for one, two, but you get that up to four with that change. Now it's much more complex to make this piece. Mm -hmm. We wanted to get that design uh, all packaged together to give us the great aerodynamics and the low CG, something that hasn't been done before. And for the Cobra aficionados, they'll know F6, F7, F8, the drivers all had a plus version. Mm -hmm. Here we've just got the one version, but you've got some movable weight technology here to sort of, for that player that needs that lower spin, get that weight a little bit more forward, they're able to do that well, as well. Well, we've done a couple things. You know, the movable weight is really there for the fitters and the golfers. We know the golfers don't probably adjust it as much, but the fitters certainly do. And that's where we know that the, the industry is moving is to fitters dialing in their equipment. You know, as we run into these limitations by the ruling bodies, the limitations of our bodies, the physics of everything, um, we know that fitting is a huge advantage and, and we recommend everyone should get fitted. Uh, so when you do that, the fitter wants the ability to adjust not only loft and lie, but also the weighting. Mm -hmm. But what we've done this year, which is a little different, in the past we've had that plus model and the standard model. This year we actually have eliminated that because a lot of the key uh, retailers out there would tell us, um, hey, there's a little bit of overlap between your F8 and F8 Plus, in both in loft, performance, et cetera, et cetera. They're almost too close together. And so the retailer said, hey, you need one, one driver that's really the, the middle of the market, which is usually the 10.5 model that covers the most golfers. Um, but then your, your dr other driver needs to be a spin killer. And last year with, uh, with the Plus and the Standard, we were having our Plus kind of at a 9.5 loft and our Standard at a 10.5. But there's a lot of overlap in terms of the design, the shape, the size. Uh, we, we, they said, let, make this one a spin killer. Even though it's a nine degree head, mm -hmm. it by design has a different CG weighting as well to reduce spin. It is oh, a okay. spin killer. So most golfers will fit into the 10.5. We still know that that's the way the, the, the equation works. But when you get that golfer that walks in and says, I need less spin, the retailers and fitters said, give them less spin. You know, not a little bit less, a lot less. Gotcha. So what you see is with a nine degree head, uh, which is a new, um, lock for us this mm -hmm. year. With a 90 degree head versus last year's 9.5, you're gonna drop at least 500 RPMs of spin. Oh wow. So that stronger player that's coming in that needs a spin reduction, the 9.0 head is gonna be much better for him than we've been in the past with the plus models. And of course, you've got the MyFly 8 loft sleeve as well to even further help players dial in exactly what they're looking for in terms of launch spin and curvature. Exactly, and, and that system, we love that system. We haven't changed it in a couple years. And uh, we were talking to some folks, and they said, well, why, why don't you change it and make it better? I said, well, it's already the lightest and the smallest system in golf. So we don't need to change it. You know, what you see is some other companies changing theirs and saying, oh, we're saving weight. Well, when you have a giant hosel, you <laughs> can save weight. But when you already have the most efficient system, you know, you, you keep what you have and you continue to use it. And, of course, finally, two neat color options for people to choose from. Mm -hmm. We've got the kind of yellow and gloss black. There's also sort of a matte black, and I think you're calling it avalanche. Avalanche, yes, yes. Um, you know, and that's something that we wanted to give the marketplace a little bit more excitement in the drivers. F8 was a really good driver for us as a family, but when you looked at it, it was pretty uh, neutral in colors, you know, pretty simple. And that was a little bit of a change for us at Cobra because we've, we've been known for a more excitement in our visual look of our product. Yeah. So we went back to a more exciting look, and it was interesting, we spent a lot of time with Ricky uh, and Bryson and, and, and Lexi talking to them early on in the year. And Ricky was the one that suggested, I love this, it's exciting, he, he gets it, he gets the whole idea of how you market products to golfers. Um, and he was the one that said, no, I love the yellow. We actually showed him orange, obviously, <laughs> you know, and he said, no, I, I think we're ready to, to move on from just doing orange all the time. He said, let's give him a different look, let's give him something that looks fast. Uh, you want the driver to kind of look fast in the rack, if you can imagine that. Yeah. But the idea there is give the whole story of speed. Uh, the way we do it as well around the back, you know, obviously we're showing off the, the wrap crown, we're showing off the speed back. So our designers did a really nice job of making a, what we think is a much better looking driver. Yeah, highlighting the, the tech, yeah. Tom, great stuff, we appreciate it, thanks. All right, Chris, for sure.